Cult's Cone here, and today I'm delving into the matter of playing Slanesh. But let me save you the trouble. You shouldn't even consider it. What on earth would you entertain the thought of aligning yourself with a wretched faction that consists of unholy union of fish, man and crab? These feeble monstrosities wouldn't know combat prowess if it danced naked in front of them. They willingly skewer themselves on your blade for a fleeting moment of pleasure, incapable of delivering any substantial damage, a lacking endurance, and a far cry from the savage brutality that emanates from the might of a superior chaos deity. They practically roll out the red carpet for our butchering and slaughter. Their feeble attempts at expansion? Don't even get me started. Vasilizing Nakari? It's like bad theater. Or laughable. Why in the name of the Blood God would you waste your time vasilizing factions when you can just carve your way through them? Claim what rightfully belongs to you and dismiss trivial politics and meager tributes. Seducing units. If they're so easily swayed by the arch enemy, they're merely additional skulls for the skull throne. And their ability to summon a handful of devotee armies or recruit ally units from vassals? With corn at your side, you can shake the very foundation of the world and summon legions of blood hosts. Who needs allies when corn's warriors stand unparalleled? Who would win in a duel? It's laughable to even pose the question. The answer is already clear. The real dilemma is whether you'd rather indulge in unsavory personal proclivities, or bathe in the blood of your enemies and offer skulls to the supreme chaos god. In my eyes there is no contest. The choice is glaringly simple. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne.